The Stories of Mahabharata Welcome dear friends to another episode of The Stories of Mahabharata In the last episode we heard how Indra tricked Karna to give him the armor and earring with which Karna was born In return Karna received the ekagni weapon to kill his arch rival Arjun It was a fine morning in the Kamyaka forest. Yudhishthir was sitting under a peepal tree with his brothers discussing their strategy for the 13th year when a Brahmin came and stood before them. Yudhishthir looked at him and said, "O oh Brahmin, what brings you here? Is there something we can do for you?" The Brahmin with folded palms said, "O oh King Yudhishthir, I have a serious problem. I had kept my bow drill hanging in a tree branch. A deer came to eat the leaves of the tree and somehow the bow got stuck in his antlers. The deer got scared and ran away with the bow drill. We tried to catch the deer but failed. Please king, help us get back our bow drill. Without it, I won't be able to light the fire for my evening worship. Yudhishthir knew the seriousness of the problem. The Brahmins used the bow drill to light fire, and missing the evening fire worship is something they cannot afford to do. Yudhishthir stood up and said, "Don't worry. We will find the deer and get your bow drill before your evening worship." He turned to his brothers and said, "Let's go." The Pandava brothers picked up their weapons and walked into the forest. looking for the deer a little later they found the deer with a bow drill stuck on its antlers nakul raised his bow and aimed to shoot the deer but before he could release the arrow the deer jumped and ran away the brothers chased the deer but couldn't catch it the deer escaped the pandavas arrows and drew them deeper and deeper into the forest they exhausted and frustrated brothers sat down in the shade of a banyan tree to cool off nakul said what are you going to say to the brahmin we have never disappointed anyone who asked for help we have never deviated from the path of dharma why did we fail today yudhishthir wiped off the sweat from his brows and said troubles and defeats can come in different forms it isn't always possible to pinpoint the reasons only dharma determines the consequences of our karma bhima said i know the reason we did not punish the sashan for insulting draupadi and for that sin we are facing such a humiliating defeat arjun said in a bitter voice i tolerated those insults from karna and that's why we have failed today sahadev said I didn't kill that evil Shakuni when he defeated us in that rigged game of dice that's the reason for our failure the heat and exhaustion made them thirsty Yudhishthir called Nakul and said can you please climb up this tree and see if you can find any lake nearby Nakul went up to the top of the tree and looked around at a distance he saw some trees and vegetation that grow near water bodies nakul climbed down and said there must be a lake nearby let me get this quiver and fetch some water nakul ran through the forest towards the lake soon he arrived at the bank of a beautiful lake surrounded by coconut and palm trees waterfalls cranes and swans played in the crystal clear waters 
Nakul's hurt was bursting from thirst. He knelt down by the water to have a drink when a voice rang out from above. Stop! This lake belongs to me. Before you drink this water, you must answer my questions. Nakul looked around, but couldn't see anybody. He was too thirsty to play any games. He ignored the voice, cupped his hand and dipped them into the lake to get some water to drink. But before the water could touch his lips, Nakul's hurt stopped. <gasps> and he collapsed to the ground, dead. Yudhishthir and the other brothers were waiting for Nakul. It shouldn't have taken so long to fetch water, thought Yudhishthir. He called Sahadev and said, Go, find Nakul and bring some water for us. Sahadev followed Nakul's tracks and arrived at the lake. Sahadev was delighted to see the clear water of the lake. He was so excited that he didn't even notice Nakul's dead body lying on the banks. As he was about to take a drink, the voice rang out again. Sahadev ignored the voice and he too fell dead on the bank of the lake. Yudhishthir then sent Arjun, followed by Bhim. Both ignored the voice and suffered the same fate as Nakul and Sahadev. Yudhishthir felt something must have gone wrong. He picked up his weapon and followed the path of his brothers. Soon he arrived at the lake. The beauty of the lake enchanted him. The gentle sound of water lapping on the banks enhanced his thirst. He walked towards the water, and what he saw was the worst sight of his life. His four brothers lying dead with their weapons scattered all around. Yudhishthir was shocked. Engulfed in pain and trembling like a leaf, Yudhishthir dropped on his knees next to his brothers. He felt like crying out loud, but no sound came out of his parched throat. How could such gallant warriors like Bhim, Arjun, Nakul and Sahadev die such an unceremonious death? Who could have killed them? Could it be some assassin employed by Duryodhan and Shakuni? He couldn't find any wound on his brother's body. Neither could he find any footmarks on the ground. He stood up and looked around. He stepped into the water and as the cold water touched his feet, he felt his thirst again. He dipped his cupped hands into the water to have a drink when the voice rang out again. Stop, Yudhishthir. Look at me. I am the crane sitting on the tree above you. I own this lake. You cannot drink this water without answering my questions. Your brothers ignored me and I have sent them to their death. You too will die if you don't obey me. Yudhishthir looked up and saw a huge crane sitting on top of a tree next to him. Yudhishthir knew this couldn't be any ordinary crane. He looked up and with folded palms said, No ordinary being could kill my valiant brothers. You must be a god or some celestial being. I bow to you. Please be kind and identify yourself. The huge crane came down from the treetop and stood before Yudhishthir on one foot. The bird was as tall as a palm tree. His eyes glowed like the sun. With a thunderous voice, the bird said, I am Yaksha. I warned your brothers several times, but they defied me and tried to drink the water. So, I killed them. Now you must answer my questions before you can drink the water from this lake. Yudhishthi said, I do not intend to drink the water without your permission. Ask your questions 
and I will try to answer them to the best of my knowledge. The Yaksha asked, Tell me, Yudhishthir, who holds the sun up in the sky, who orbits around the sun, who sends the sun to its rest, and where is he established? Yudhishthir answered, Brahman holds the sun up in the sky. The gods orbit around the sun. Dharma sends him to his rest. And it is the truth that establishes him. What gives a Brahmin his divine attribute? What practice makes him a saint? What makes him a human? What makes him evil? Study of the Vedas and scriptures gives a Brahmin his divineness. Practice of penance and worship makes him a saint. He is mortal and that makes him a human. Speaking ill of others makes him evil. What gives a Kshatriya his godlike qualities? What practices make him a saint, a human and a evil being? Acquiring skills with weapons gives him his godlike qualities. Practice of sacrifice and yagna makes him a saint. Fear makes him a human. And to abandon a refugee makes him evil. Who is heavier than earth? Who is taller than sky? Who is faster than wind? Who is more abundant than grass? Mother is heavier than earth. Father is taller than sky. Our mind can race faster than wind and our thoughts are more abundant than grass. Who doesn't close their eyes during sleep? Who doesn't move after birth? Who doesn't have a hurt? And who grows with speed? A fish doesn't close its eyes when they sleep. An egg doesn't move after birth. A rock doesn't have a hurt. A river grows with speed. Who is a friend of an expatriate, of a family man and of a sick person? An expatriate's friend is his companion. A family person's friend is his spouse. And a sick person's friend is his doctor. Giving up what makes a person popular? Quitting what rids a person of his grief? Forsaking what makes a man rich? Abandoning what makes a man happy? Giving up ego makes a person popular. Quitting anger rids a person of his grief. Forsaking desire makes a person rich. And abandoning greed makes a person happy. What is the most important message? What is strange? What is the best path? Who is happy? Answer these four questions and you can drink the water. Humans and animals are being constantly cooked in this illusory world as its pot, and the sun its fire, and the months and seasons its utensils. This is the most important message. Animals are dying every moment, every day. Still they try to live and strive to become immortal. What can be stranger? Scriptures are many. So is knowledge. No two wise men agree on a single path of knowledge. Hence, the path taken by the majority of the wise is the path to follow. And one who is free of debt, doesn't live abroad, and can afford a simple meal of vegetables a day, is the happiest person. You have answered all my questions to my satisfaction. I will revive one of your brothers. Tell me whom you would like to see alive. If you so wish, please revive Nakul. I want him to be alive. That is strange. I know Bhim is your favorite and Arjun is your strength. 
instead of saving them why would you want to save your step brother nakul kunti and madri are both our mothers i want at least one son of each to live yaksha was happy with yudhishthir's answers o king yudhishthir you are indeed the living embodiment of dharma instead of wealth and might you preferred the path of non-violence i will grant life to all your brothers with yaksha's blessings bhim arjun nakul and sahadev woke up from their death sleep the brothers drank from the lake and felt refreshed and invigorated yudhishthir bowed down to yaksha and said lord you stand in the lake on one foot in the form of a crane i am sure you are not a yaksha because a yaksha cannot kill my brothers you must be a god please reveal yourself to us the yaksha shed off the form of a crane and said my son i am your father dharma i am pleased with you i want to give you a gift tell me what do you want yudhishthir said we are searching for the bow drill of the brahmin please make sure that the brahmin is not deprived of his duty of performing the fire sacrifice dharma smiled and said to test you i took the form of a deer and stole the bow drill he returned the bow drill to yudhishthir ask for something else we have spent our 12 years in exile now we go into hiding for one year bless such that nobody could recognize us in our 13th year dharma said don't worry i bless you even if you stay the way you are nobody would be able to recognize you spend your 13th year in the kingdom of virat you would be able to live there in whatever way you wish the pandavas thanked dharma and went back to the hermitage and returned the bow drill to the brahmin the brahmin thanked them and left happy to perform his evening ritual of fire sacrifice